Scientists have warned that future volcanic eruptions are likely due to the buildup of magma beneath the seaside town of Grindavik, and that Iceland's impending volcano blast is only the start of a new era of volcanic eruptions that will last for millennia. The Rake Janes Peninsula's Fagradalsfjall volcano is threatening to explode. According to Iceland's Met Office, there is a high likelihood of a volcanic eruption, which could occur at any point in the next few days. Following an 800-year hiatus, a volcanic explosion in 2021 signaled the beginning of a new volcanic activity cycle. Now, according to Cambridge volcanologist Clive Oppenheimer, the blast may have initiated a new eruptive phase that might extend for centuries. The time has finally come, said Edward W. Marshall, a researcher at the Nordic Volcanological Center at the University of Iceland, to live science. We can prepare for several hundred years of volcanic activity on the rake chains. More than 800 additional earthquakes have shook the area since midnight, and experts are warning that the swelling magma near the Earth's surface is causing fears of an impending volcanic explosion. The fishing village of Grindavik has become a ghost town due to thousands of earthquakes in the last few days, forcing 4,000 of its residents to flee. With the help of emergency personnel, those who were permitted to go back to their homes yesterday to retrieve personal things were told to leave when the Icelandic Met Office reported that increasing sulfur dioxide levels on its meters could be a sign of an impending euroin. Videos have emerged from the abandoned town, displaying images of devastation, including roads with huge chasms and houses torn apart. Mamlov for Magahulda Famuditer claimed her family was rendered homeless after terrible earthquakes completely destroyed their property. She was only given seven minutes to retrieve items from her residence on Monday. We left our house Friday night at 9, 0 p.m. with clothes for two days and two boxes of photo albums, then just planned to come back the next day to pick up more, Maga told Malanang. Friday was terrible. The earthquakes did not stop for many hours. I have a range of emotions going on. I feel okay, but I get scared and jump at the slightest sound, and then we are homeless in one minute, the 50-year-old added. On Monday, we were allowed to go inside the house. We were given seven minutes to gather the items we wished to save, with clothing and sentimental items from my mother, grandmother, and grandfather being the most valued. Maga shared a video taken inside her house and expressed how devastated she was to lose the home that she and her spouse had spent years saving. Video footage demonstrates how the intensity of the constant earthquakes tore her home from its foundations, forcing her family to evacuate on Friday with only a few items. A state of emergency was issued in Iceland, and on Saturday morning, about 4,000 people of Grindavik were evacuated. Since a seismic swarm struck on October 25, thousands of earthquakes have rattled the southwest Rake Janes Peninsula, leaving Iceland on edge as they fear Fagradals Frawl, which is only a few kilometers from Grindavik, would erupt. Experts believe that a massive nine-mile-long magma intrusion, located northwest of Grindavik, has formed and is continuing to grow, with magma as near as 500 meters below the surface. Experts said that magma was gathering three miles below the surface just a few days ago, but if estimates are accurate, it has now risen far close. The Meteorological Office stated, at this point, it is not possible to determine exactly whether and where magma might reach the surface. The police chief evacuated Grindavik after learning on Tuesday that higher amounts of sulfur dioxide had been discovered by their new meters, according to the Icelandic Met Office. A Met Office's Benedict Gofagson, a geophysicist, stated that although the amount of SOTO found is not large, the rise suggests that magma is approaching the surface. Magma does not release SOTO until it is really near the surface. It simply refers to the upper mile, he remarked. After this weekend's observations, magma was found to be around 800 meters below the surface, but N. Fagson now anticipates considerably lower levels. We may be discussing a distance of 500 meters. It isn't clear the pressure is so high and the pressure determines when it rises. Therefore, it is impossible to determine the depth directly, but in order for us to perceive so too, the magma must be extremely shallow. Although there were no signs of an eruption on other devices, Ofakes and Hold Icelandic TVR UV yesterday that they did not want to rule it out. 
He said that so too does not arise in this fashion until magma is very high in the Earth's crust. As magma rises to the surface, it releases sulfur dioxide, a toxic gas that is lethal to humans at high exposure levels. If seen at a volcano that isn't currently erupting, it can be an indication that it will do so soon. Experts have stated that although there are few earthquakes and the tremors are not as strong as they were in previous days, this could mean that magma is getting closer to the surface and that an eruption is possible soon. According to Reykjavik-based Rick Pedersen, the head of the Nordic Volcanological Center, less seismic activity usually precedes an eruption because you have come so close to the surface that you cannot build up a lot of tension to trigger large earthquakes. She stated, it should never be interpreted as a sign that an outbreak is not imminent. Authorities are putting up defense walls around a nearby geothermal power station in the hopes that it will shield it from lava flows in case the worst comes. The Svartsenji Geothermal Power Station, which is situated slightly over 6 kilometers from Grindavik, is intended to be protected by a sizable dike. According to information provided to RUV on Tuesday by Iceland's Justice Minister Gudrun Half Steinstutter, she stated that supplies and equipment large enough to load 20,000 trucks were being sent to the plant, and that official government approval for construction is still pending. A representative for the plant's operator, H.S. Orca, stated that an interruption would not affect the supply of power to the nation's capital, Rakia. The facility generates hot and cold water as well as electricity for the entire nation. We believe that this intrusion is literally hovering, sitting in equilibrium presently just below the Earth's surface, stated Matthew James Roberts, director of the Service and Research Division of Iceland's Meteorological Office. Right now, there is so much uncertainty. What kind of harm, if any, will result from an eruption? Volcanologists warn that if Fagretal's fjall should blow, the ash cloud it produced would not be as massive as it was during the 2010 AF Yat Lyrkatli eruption, despite growing fears that another eruption may bring about the same catastrophe. Thirteen years ago, an eruption caused the largest aviation shutdown in history since World War II, affecting 8 million passengers and cancelling 50,000 flights. Speaking on the distinctions between a possible eruption of Afyat Lyrkadal and Fagradal's Fjall, Mr. Roberts stated that while lava might pour across the town, an ash blast was less likely to result from an eruption. First of all, there isn't an ice cap on top. And it's not a strata volcano, so there wouldn't be an explosive blast of volcanic ash into the stratosphere, he said on Monday on BBC R4's Today program. The main hazard would be a volcanic eruption that produces lava along a series of fissures. Roads and other infrastructure might be in harm's way, he continued, if an eruption that persists for weeks occurs. Iceland is a hot spot for earthquakes and volcanic eruptions because it is situated between two of the world's major tectonic plates, the Eurasian and the North American, which are moving in different directions. The Fagradalsfjall volcanic system in the area saw magnificent lava fountain eruptions in March 2021 from a 500 to 750 meter long crack in the ground. Thousands of Icelanders and visitors visited the area during the six months of ongoing volcanic activity in that year. The same region saw a three-week-long eruption in August 22 and another in July of this year.